So hi, Microbe Hunter here. Well, today's question is a little bit longer than the other questions. Specifically, it's a question about a microscope upgrade. And I like to read out the question first to you again, and then I'll give you my opinion on the whole issue. I currently own a Swift SW150 compound microscope with three objective lenses, uh, four times, 10 times, and 40 times, and two eyepieces, a 10 times and a 25 times magnifying eyepiece. I'm sure you're aware of the model. I've been pondering the idea of purchasing the model you have demonstrated here in your video, the Swift SW380T. At only around 270 pounds, uh, it's a good buy and a very nice looking scope. However, buying this would not be possible for me until around July or August this year, 2021, once I've saved up my pennies. My main question is, would I benefit anything in terms of optical quality with this model over the SW150 model? Honestly, I'm happy with the model I have using, um, um, using it with my Samsung smartphone and my Swift smartphone adapter, which I took from your recommendation on one of your videos and purchased through your affiliate shop and I'm happy with my scope only being monocular. I have also upgraded the stage by adding a universal mechanical one. I understand that the Swift SW380T has many other nice features including proper condenser and a fourth objective lens, but do I really need these features? First of all, thank you again very much uh, for this question. And when I first read the question, I have to admit I was yeah, quite happy because it actually shows that you can do serious amateur mic microscopy also with uh, small microscopes like this here. And uh, yeah, this one here is not the SW150, it's the SW110. It's a little bit smaller, but uh, it uh, shares many of the features. So what I will be doing is, is I'll be comparing those two microscopes because this is the other one that uh, yeah, you want to upgrade to. Um, and uh, actually there are two different ways of approaching this whole question. Uh, one way is, is by actually making a comparison of features, but maybe that is not the, really the only thing that's uh, important here. Um, it also has to do a little bit with the way that you do microscopy. So I'll try to give you a somewhat balanced answer. And uh, I'm not automatically saying that you should upgrade. Um, so, but you might, uh, but uh, it's not a yes or no answer, okay? So first of all, a couple of uh, things that I would like to clarify concerning the microscope hardware and some of the differences that you've uh, addressed in, in, in your question. Um, both microscopes here, um, of course, uh, have uh, four times, 10 times and 40 times objectives. But this one over here also has a so-called a 100 times oil immersion objective. Yeah, that's the one with the white ring over here, um, which gives you a total magnification of a thousand times. So 100 times times 10 times eyepiece gives you a thousand times a total magnification. And this is the question is, is, is this worth it? And I have to tell you, this is probably the thing where I would say is no, it's probably not worth it. Uh, just for the higher magnification, because the oil immersion lens is difficult to use. You need to use immersion oil. Um, I think it has limited applications, especially the water life that you many people like to observe um, can be best seen at lower magnifications, at the high magnifications. The specimens move uh, in and out of focus very much because the depth of field is so low. Um, it's difficult to focus and their whole, the oil is, immersion oil is messy. Separate videos on that I've made um, already. So concerning that, uh, I would say it's probably not worth it. And then the question, the second thing is, is what about uh, the condenser? Because uh, those uh, introductory microscopes, what they have is they have a, a rotating disc here, but this is not really a condenser, okay? And I think that the uh, little filters and the holes and the apertures that you have in here are pretty ineffective. Um, so I have to admit, I don't really know why the company actually included those because the effect is not really very strong. Um, while those larger microscopes, they have a real condenser and uh, this condenser has, of course, also, uh, yeah, can be, the diaphragm can be opened and closed. And I think that this is indeed uh, something that is uh, quite um, interesting and good um, because it does improve image quality, especially for the 40 times um, objective. So I would say that uh, for the low power, um, the difference in image quality is not that big. Um, one of the differences is, is that the field of view is much smaller. So it means you're seeing everything in a smaller circle. This has to do something with eyepieces. So you actually are seeing a little bit more with the bigger microscopes here. Uh, but also at the 40 times magnification, because of the condenser, the image quality can be adjusted between contrast and depth of field. 
and overall the image quality I feel is more contrasty and therefore a little bit better. Um, however, this can of course also be comp can be compensated if you take pictures by using Photoshop or image editing. You can also increase the contrast again. So you see, uh, yeah. Um, but I think one of the real big advantages for amateurs that those uh, microscopes with a condenser have is, is the fact that you can have actually have a filter. Uh, you can put uh, filters in here. For example, I've made this homemade uh, patch stop filter. I also made other videos on that um, it's 3d printed and this can give you dark field and you can also use oblique illumination and Reinberg illumination and this really um, um, expands really the the things that you can look at or at least it makes the things that you look at more interesting to look at so it gives you more experimentation and uh, this would be a um, yeah I would say one of the, the advantages if you want to keep yourself motivated and if you want to experiment around a little bit more then that is actually a nice thing to have is a microscope with a condenser which gives you simply more things to play around with um, however, if you are uh, already satisfied with uh, your small microscope because the, the objects that you look at um, can be observed in regular bright field and you're happy with that, then there's actually not a big reason to change um, other than that it's also more convenient to use both eyepieces compared to one of them here. Yeah, you see, um, it, it, everything has, uh, yeah, there's always something better that one can have. I mean, uh, there are some people who may not be happy with this one here because it does not, uh, doesn't have certain features. Now concerning about uh, taking pictures, of course this one here has a photo tube, but you can of course also attach a camera directly uh, to, uh, to this eyepiece here um, as well. So concerning pictures it's also possible. Um, so you see there is not, in that sense, there is really not so much of a, of a difference, but I think the main difference is is that if you are actually um, sitting behind the microscope for a long time um, it is simply much more comfortable and convenient and it uh, yeah to use a, a larger microscope because it is larger it's more stable to use you've got a mechanical stage here that uh, allows you to move the specimen around um, so there are a whole bunch of, of several features or several um, yeah things that kind of add up that kind of add to the whole experience of, of, of microscopy um, and it is not only the image alone but it's also kind of the the, the context a little bit uh, that also plays a role um, so in that sense uh, I, I would say it's not a very clear answer because uh, you can also look at many things in nature using introductory microscopes but it depends really also on your own level of, of um, expectations that you have um, and uh, if you are perfectly happy with this microscope then I would say then stay with that um, and if you don't have uh, right now the cash available then maybe one of the things that I can recommend as an intermediate uh, thing is, is, is maybe to exchange the eyepiece into one that has a slightly larger um, field of view so one maybe with a, a field number of 18 if yours has 16 or something like that I would recommend a 10 times eyepiece with a field number of 18 because this actually does give you a slightly larger view um, and another question that I have is, is how in the world did you manage to exchange your stage I'd like to know how you did that maybe you can leave a comment here um, because I did not actually know that it's possible to buy spare parts uh, to actually modify this uh, to a different stage yeah, so I would like to know a little bit how this actually works. So this is a little bit now the, um, how shall I say this, the, 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 the hardware aspect concerning the comparison of the microscopes, uh, but now a slightly more philosophical, um, if, philosophical uh, approach here. Um, if you look and if you actually consider upgrading and uh, you don't know if you want to buy a microscope now or later or so on, my advice is, um, it's not an advice really, once you've actually seen the comparison, looked through a slightly better microscope or more expensive microscope, um, you probably you probably want to have it. That is usually the thing. Um, if you don't know um, what you're seeing and uh, you don't have the expectation, but once you actually look through a microscope with a brighter image with slight with better optics, yeah, because these are actually full size optics, okay, um, there is higher contrast. There is maybe less chromatic aberration. Um, there are so many little things that kind of add up that uh, once you actually look through a better microscope then yeah you kind of wonder how you were ever ever satisfied with uh, something you know, cheaper but you see um, if you look through a research microscope an expensive research microscope that they use in pathology in medicine and research at universities then you probably don't want to look through those anymore here as either because the field of view is still larger it gives you even a yet more immersive impression the optical quality is yet better um, so you see there is never an end
<laughs> there's never an end and and what i would probably say is the following um exploit that what you have right now okay um i personally feel that uh, very often we microscopists um, place a very strong emphasis on hardware um, on the technology on the optics uh, on the features okay um, and sometimes we have to be careful that we don't lose the observation aspect out of our um, eyesight after all one way of interpreting microscopy is um, all the nature observation and, and, and kind of looking at the environment differently and enjoying nature and enjoying the microorganisms that you find in, in, in pond water and all of these things um, and then being able to see how they change um, as, you, as the pond water ages. I keep pond water samples for weeks if not months on my desk always refilling the water when it evaporates and then I can see that there's a progression of different microorganisms. Um, so it's the observation aspect really um, and this is why I would say um, let's not always hunt for better um, microscopes with more features um, and but let's also try to exploit that what we already have and in that sense I kind of liked uh, the question a lot where you said well actually you're quite happy with the microscope that you already have um, and then I would say is this don't pressure yourself just save up the money a little bit until you have it uh, then buy yourself uh, one but if you really um, exploit the things that you have right now and if you really try to define the hobby in such a way that you're placing a strong emphasis on nature observation and so on um, then you're not missing out on anything um, and as a matter of fact this is actually something that I generally recommend um, yeah just some thoughts um, yeah hardware is not everything um, and uh, there are different ways of interpreting the hobby um, so not a clear yes or no um, answer but uh, rather one that I say um, change then maybe maybe that's the the summary change then when you feel that it's time to change when you feel that you have learned so much more that you're outgrowing the instrument that you have then it is time to change but if it keeps you busy and interested right now then don't change and maybe use the money to buy some books or um, yeah to buy some I don't know <laughs> some lab equipment or or I don't know yeah something like that or that kind of keeps you busy in other ways when you feel that you're outgrowing the instrument that it's time to move on uh, then I think it's a natural um, natural time to change um, and uh, until that you have not missed any anything because you've been learning and I think that's the important thing uh, because even I am still learning um, and I've, uh, yeah, ever since I started this YouTube channel I learned so much uh, also in relation to microscopy because it kind of also forced me to keep up uh, to date uh, with uh, with my, my microscopy and to try out different uh, also yeah sampling techniques and experimental techniques and so on okay um i'm starting to sidetrack again i think yeah leave your comments as always uh, to subscribe to the channel if you like it thank you to my patrons of course i have a newsletter um which i want to send out around once um, a month or keep you updated on what's going on in uh, yeah in my youtube channels and maybe some other stuff as well happy micro hunting as always see you around next time and uh, bye bye